These are two ground points at zero potential along with few connectors. This is an op amp. This is inverting terminal of the op amp. Negative sign indicates a phase reversal of input V1 at the output. This is non inverting terminal. Name suggests no phase reversal of input voltage V2 at the output. This is input resistance R1 connected to the op amp. This is output resistance or feedback resistance R2. This is input voltage applied to the inverting terminal. So the name of the circuit inverting op amp. This is output of op, op amp. If R2 and R1 are open and non-inverting terminal is grounded, then as told earlier, V1 will appear at the output as minus A well V1, where A suffix well is the open loop gain of the amplifier. Again, if inverting terminal is grounded, that is V1 is equal to 0, V2 will appear at the output as A well times V2. So any V error voltages, V1 and V2 at input will give V output is equal to A well times V error, where V error is equal to V1 difference V2. Now, A well tends to infinity in case of ideal op amp, so V error tends to 0. In case of inverting amplifier as shown in the figure, V2 is grounded that is 0 potential. So, V error equal to V1 minus V2 equal to 0 that is V1 equal to V2, but V2 equal to 0, so V1 is equal to 0 that is grounded. But it is not directly connected to ground, so it is virtual ground. The another difference between the real ground and virtual ground is that real ground can sink any amount of current, but as the input impedance of a pump is infinite, virtual ground cannot sink any current. Now the question is that a portion of V input after drop at R1 will appear at virtual ground although its voltage is 0. How it is possible? The answer is that a portion of V output will be fed back through R2 and forces virtual ground to go to 0 potential. We will now apply this conception of virtual ground in the integrated circuit. Current through R1 is I equal to V input minus 0 by R1 since V1 is equal to 0 as it is virtual ground. That is I is equal to V input by R1. And as the input impedance of op amp is infinite, op amp does not sink any current and same current will flow through Cf and will charge it to Q is equal to integration I dt where I is equal to already told V input divided by R1. So Q is equal to integration V input by R1 dt. Voltage across Cf is 0 minus V output is equal to minus V output. Since V1 is equal to 0 again due to it is virtual ground. So V output is equal to minus Q by Cf is equal to minus 1 by Cf R1 integration V input dt. Thus, if F equal to 0 DC level, 1 by omega C tends to infinity, thus Cf will act as open circuit at low frequency leading A equal to A open loop is equal to 10 to the power 5 for practical op amp and any input offset voltage at input which exists in all practical op amp will lead output of op amp to go to saturation. For example, if V input offset equal to 1 millivolt, then V output is equal to A well times V input offset is equal to 10 to the power 5 into 1 millivolt is equal to 100 volt leading to saturation. So we have to connect a feedback resistance RF parallel to CF to provide a path for feedback at low frequency. Current through R1 is I equal to V input minus 0 divided by R1 as before. Impedance of RF parallel CF, the feedback path is equal to RF into within bracket minus j by omega cf divided by rf minus j by omega cf. Impedance of cf being minus j by omega cf. Same current i as through r1 will pass through this parallel combination of rf and cf 
since input impedance of a pump is infinite and it does not sink any current. Now, I equal to 0 minus V output divided by Rf into minus J by omega Cf divided by Rf minus J by omega Cf. Equating equation 1 and 2, we get V output by V input equal to minus Rf by R1 divided by 1 plus J omega Cf Rf. If omega Cf Rf very very less than 1, that is at very low frequency, V output by V input equal to minus Rf by R1 and it is clearly independent of frequency and simply act as inverting amplifier. It cannot integrate any signal. If and only if omega Cf Rf very very greater than 1, modulus of V output by V input equal to A equal to 1 by 2 pi R1 Cf F. Clearly, V output is frequency dependent. Thus, for integrator to work properly, omega Cf Rf must be very very greater than 1. And the limiting frequency Fc equal to 1 by 2 pi Cf Rf putting omega Cf Rf equal to 1 above which integrator will act properly. If f equal to 0 the DC level gain A at f equal to 0 that is equal to modulus of V output by V input is equal to A open loop and it is equal to 10 to the power 5 for practical op amp then the decibel gain is clearly 20 log A base 10 at f equal to 0 equal to 100 decibel. Again modulus of V output by V input is equal to A at a particular frequency f equal to f0 equal to 1 by 2 pi r1 cf f0 equal to 1 giving f0 equal to 1 by 2 pi r1 cf at which decibel gain is 0 because 20 log a base 10 equal to 20 log 1 base 10 equal to 0 decibel. Thus, practical op amp will act properly between f0 and fc which is shown in the decibel plot. Fc is the limiting frequency above which op amp will act as integrator and its decibel gain will become zero at a particular frequency f0. In practice, Fc is not a sharp point but have a slight fluctuation. I have shown in the figure there are two Fc in the curved portion of the graph. Due to this curvature of the plot, it is better to use frequency greater than 10 times the limiting frequency Fc. That is, F should lie between F0 and 10 Fc.